So we've already established how we can use a D flip flop here to store the state of an input line and retrieve it later when we need it, um, effectively just remembering the state of a particular line at a particular point in time as dictated by the clock input. Um, but as we've learned back in combination logic, uh, pairs of wires can be put together to represent larger numbers. Um, and of course, that can be tied in with binary arithmetic and binary number systems to do a lot of really cool stuff with digital uh, logic circuits like this. So it stands to reason then that if we can store a single bit in a D flip-flop like this, that there must be a circuit that can do the same thing with groups of bits. And indeed there is. Uh, the circuit that we are referring to, of course, is referred to as a register. Now the register does exactly what a D flip-flop does with a single bit, except it does it with multiple bits. So a group of, of bits will come in on the D input and uh, they can be saved and retrieved by the Q output when the clock signal goes high. So if um, we'll say maybe uh, 0x81 uh, comes in on the, um, on the D input here, when that clock signal goes from low to high, that 0x81 will then get stored in the registered, or register and get presented on the output Q. So how exactly does one build a register then? Um, how exactly does one create something that can store groups of wires instead of a, a single one? Well, remember the function for a group of wires is the exact same as the function for a single wire, just scaled up to, well, a group of wires. When we stored that 0x81 in the register, um, it was the exact same as storing the 1 on the first bit, and the 0 on the next bit, and the 1 on the third bit, uh, in the register and then representing those same numbers on the output. Effectively, what we were doing is we were just taking a bunch of D flip-flops and we'll just do this here with our inputs here and our outputs here. And we were just taking the C input of each of them and tying them together. That's it. That's the whole circuit for a register. So with all of these D flip-flops, each taking care of memorizing a single bit, with one pulse of the of the clock input, all of these D flip-flops will then memorize the input that they have been given and present that input on the output. On top of that, you can also have what's referred to as a controlled or an enabled register. And all that is, is it's basically the exact same thing as a normal register, except the output is controlled by an enable line. So if the enable line, we'll do this here. If the enable line is a zero, then Q um, is usually either going to be zero in some cases or in other cases, it's actually going to be um, tri-stated. That's uh, symbol for high impedance typically. Um, that's more in electronics, we're not really covering that, but just for all intents and purposes, if E is zero, the output is usually zero as well. Um, however, if E is a one, then Q is whatever is in the data register, and we'll denote data register as DR, that way we're not confusing with the D input. So whatever is stored in the register is presented on the output Q if E is a one, otherwise it is a zero or in some cases high impedance. And again, building something like that really isn't that difficult to, I mean, really um, all this is is basically just an uncontrolled register here. If I draw my clock, my data input and my output, um, we can basically just take this and run it through a buffer and that is basically our E input right there. And that's all that that register is. Uh, it's basically just a normal register with a buffered output. So you might not think that uh, having a controlled output on a register it would be particularly useful. You might think that that's really not necessary, but I can tell you that there are many, many occasions where having a controlled output on a register is very useful. This example right here is uh, one of your more prime examples, and that's where a bunch of registers share a single bus. Um, you can, of course, do this fairly easily without modifying the register for the right aspect. If you have the same bus going to multiple registers and you want to save the value of the bus into a specific register, all you have to do is just clock that specific register. Um, so, for example, if I have 
a 0x will do a different number, f7. Uh, if I have 0x f7 on this bus here and I want to store it in this register right here, all I have to do is just clock this, uh, this register's clock signal here. Um, and then whatever is in this register doesn't get affected, whatever is in this register doesn't get affected, and that 0x f7 gets saved in this register right here. If I want to retrieve it, however, um, all I have to do is hit the enable on this. Now, if this wasn't here, all three of these registers would be dumping their contents onto the output bus here. And that can jumble it all up very quickly or all together, depending on the kind of circuit you have, into 0x f F. So that doesn't really help. If we're getting all of these together, uh, we're basically just going to get the ORD result of all of them. Again, depending on the type of circuit you've got. But if we want to get exactly what was on this bus prior, um, we need to be able to control when these registers give their output. And so that's what that enable is for. So if we want to get the content of this register, which has that F7, um, we would select the enable line for that register and it would dump the F7 onto the bus. Likewise, if we wanted the contents of this register, we just enable it. Same with this register. And so with that, that's pretty much all you can do on a functional level with registers. But believe me when I say this is one of those fundamental components in sequential logic circuits that allow you to do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And so here I've just kind of drawn up kind of a basic example here where we actually have um, of a, a couple of uh, storage registers for various numbers as well as uh, ALU with some various functions. Um, and then an accumulator register, uh, which we can use to cycle around uh, the value in the accumulator um, and perform operations on whatever is in these registers here. So we're going to get more into that as the videos progress, of course. We're going to actually start to see registers performing more and more critical roles in uh, various circuits here. But just all you really need to understand for now is that a register is basically something that can store a group of bits in uh well, in itself, um, and can be gated so that it only represents what it's got stored when it's requested.